Fede. Um, you just tell us a little bit, a bit about Don't Breathe. So Don't Breathe is a, is a horror thriller, right? And um, it's more on the thrill side than horror, I guess, but it's uh, so far, at least all the time to a show, that it turns out to be very, very spooky for the audience. So that, yes. that really makes it a horror movie. And um, it's, uh, it's about these three kids in Detroit. They, all of them come from very poor neighborhoods and, and houses, and um, they're really trying to just make enough money to, to get out of there, and they make this decision, which is not really good or clever, they decide to rob this blind guy, and they know he has a lot of money he's sitting on, and they think they have a shot of getting in because, of course, he's blind, and that sounds like easy. But, of course, as soon as they break into his house, they realize they have completely underestimated him. Of course, because it's one of the things that we all know that blind people, though they cannot see, the rest of their senses are... No, they're not that enhanced, but they are, they really know how to use them. Mm -hmm. So that makes for a very, very interesting kind of mouse game inside the house. But if I tell you anything else, it will be yeah. spoiling because that's just kind of the tip of the iceberg of what of what happens inside the house that there's no way to see it coming, like yeah. what really happens in the story. I, how did you move from Evil Dead to, to this? Was this a story you already had in your head before that you finally put to fruition? Or uh, No, it was actually right here in San Diego. Like we. We were here at the end of 2013 promoting Evil Dead. The Blu-ray was coming out, and I was uh, we were just taking the the drive back to LA uh, with my co-writer, and um, and we just based on the pos positive reaction that we realized Evil Dead had in in our audience around here, like we thought we should make a movie for them, like a follow-up to that movie, without being just reacting to Evil Dead too, but just something that could be in that world. But it was. For, for that audience that, you know, because if you're 20 when you watch Evil Dead, you're 23, 24, and, and that's a big difference. Like, you're looking for different mm -hmm. movies. And so we didn't want to give them another ghost story. We wanted to do something different. We want to do something more classic, more in the real world. And that, mean, that meant we weren't going for in your shock face gore, right? <laughs> like, it, it, was, it, it was basically, it was going to be more about the suspense. And that's yeah. what really Don't Breathe is about. Is, and that's why it's called Don't Breathe. Because so far, every time we show it, like people Hold their realize best. when they walk out of the, the movie that they haven't managed to breathe for an entire hour and a half. Um, Spencer, who saw the film, he said it's it's gory like Evil Dead, but it's not as bloody. It, gory, yeah. Well, gory is the way we're like, I yeah, there's no... I mean, there's blood. Evil Dead gory, but I mean, exactly. like, yeah. Exactly, it was very gory, like, very bloody. But yeah. Yeah, there's not, there's not a lot of blood in this movie. Now, there's other fluids, but that's... <laughs> There's no plot. <laughs> um, talk a little bit about casting. I mean, you've got Jane from Evil Dead, of course, and then you, you've got Stephen Lang and then Dylan Minette. I don't know if I was his last name. That's, that's perfect. Okay. <laughs> how, did, how did you get those three guys involved? It was uh, Jane, of course, because we were working Evil Dead together, and I, I, she was the first one to read the script. And um, at, by the time we started casting, she wasn't available, but I think two weeks before I was about to start shooting, I still didn't have... The, the 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 actress to play Rocky and I, but and she she was about to make a movie but that didn't happen so suddenly she was available and I, and I called her and she was like super excited to go in and, and make this film, then it, Dylan and uh, Danny Savato which played the other two kids both of them were kind of that situation where they walk into the room and and you know they're they're mm -hmm. they gotta you gotta cast them because they're just so good and. And Stephen Lang, which played Blind Man, was really the the one that is that was kind of the discover for me. I mean, as, as soon as I as I read this his name and I saw his photo, I was like, oh, he will be perfect for it because it's not a lot of people that can do what he does, like being being like a sixty five year old man that you may feel like oh, just a frail old man, mm -hmm. and then suddenly he turns it on. And he's, yeah, he's a beast, right? So it was I was you know. It was the best choice I've made in my life to cast <laughs> to, to be on this movie. Um, talk about the setting of Detroit. I mean, why Detroit? And well, it's it was because it was necessary to tell the story. This wasn't just a random choice. I mean, the the most of the story happens inside a house where there's gunshots and screams, and then they're in this big chase mm -hmm. inside a house. So. But we wanted to be in, an, we didn't want to be out in the woods in a cabin. We wanted to be in a house in the middle of the neighborhood. So we found some areas in, in, in Detroit, like in other cities in the States, but particularly Detroit has a lot of areas that just, because the city has shrunk, shrunk back to, yeah. to a smaller size, like you have a lot of areas that are just completely empty. So kind of the, 
idea was that in Detroit nobody will hear your screams, right? It was particularly in that street where there's nobody there. Actually. Yeah. We shot in a real street where there was literally just one house where there were actually people living, and that's the house where we were shooting, right? So it's, um, it, it was pretty unique for the setup, but that's what makes for a pretty special setup. In the movie. Yeah. Like you in a place, in a house, in the street, but there's nobody living out, and there's nobody else living in that city, right? Yeah, uh, it can be creepy and weird on its own. <laughs> so, <laughs> there weren't a blind guy. Um, talk a little bit about how Stephen Lang um, kind of got into character, because it's not just a random guy living in a house. I mean, he's yeah. blind, and he. Well, it, that of course, like he's a, he's a great actor. He's from a New York actor studio, one of those really old school guys that has they have a good method and strong <laughs> method, and um, so he definitely came in prepared. But also, what I mean, I like what I like to do as a director. I want to give my actors a real experience. I want to put them through something that is quite similar to what the characters go through in the movie, and so they don't have to fake it so much, right? If yeah. it's something that's scary, it should be scary for them a little bit. If they're going, if they're seeing the movie that's pitch darkness, they should be pitch darkness. There's many other things that just try to give them a real experience. And so for slang, as you should call him if you meet him, <laughs> and it's basically he is a, he came in not just being prepared, but also the reality was that he was wearing this contact lenses during the movie that make him not see oh, anything. So that helps. most of the time he's not faking the blindness. He just could see, yeah. see anything. It yeah. was, uh, it was, he, he became that character by being able to know every corner of the set and the house up, you know, up and down. And, and he really got to a point that he didn't need anybody to lead him down the hallways. He knew that house by heart. And it was really fascinating to see him really become the character. So was it an actual set in the interiors or did you film it in a house? We we shot part of, part in the in a lot of we shot a lot of location in Detroit. But uh, when you're inside the house we build a set. Okay. Because uh, there's something that you'll see in the movie is that the, the camera is kind of almost a character in the movie and really you really need to do a lot of things with it and move it in certain ways mm. that that is pretty unique and and for that, you need to be able to control the house, right? Yeah. Uh, so you should be, you shouldn't be restricted by a wall that is there. You cannot move. So yeah. We, so we recreate almost entirely the whole interior of the house in in a soundstage in order to give you that yeah. strong cinematic experience. Right? Um, I, can I ask you just from uh, from your perspective as a director? Um, you've now done a, a couple of well-known horror films. Are are you wanting to stay in that genre, or are you wanting to branch out and do other things? I mean, I have a lot of fun making this film, films, honestly, and I, and it's it's one of those genres that are so unique, and it's just it's just like a good comedy. You, it's it's a few it's one of the few genres as as I think a long as long you know, with comedies, are the only ones that you really get a verbal response of the audience while you're watching the movie, right? Like, you know right there in the room if they're liking it or not because you can yeah. hear them screaming and screaming and, and all the things were pretty unique. All the movies, you don't know until it's over. If they like it or not, <laughs> you do know right, right away. And um, so that's something that I find fascinating as a director because I can, it's almost like giving them a live show, right? Evil Dead was, was supposed to be that almost like a rock concert and this one, it is definitely in the same style. But um, but yeah, I mean, I like I, I really like so many genres and that. But I think the sci-fi world is something I really want to do. I, that's I, this short in sci-fi world that was really what took me to Hollywood and uh, called Panic Attack. And uh, yeah, so I, I saw really that. want to go back to that at some point. Sci-fi, sci-fi horror. <laughs> Thank you so much for talking with us. Stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. It's tight. Don't even try to bite the sun. Mr. Spock can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Borg can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it feels alright.